I want to read a few verses here from Ephesians chapter 4 tonight. I'm going to jump around just quickly, but I just want to read, um, if you turn with me to Ephesians chapter number 4. Amen. And and this is uh, Paul speaking to the church at Ephesus here, talking about the unity of the Spirit, talking about uh, the unity of the church. And, and he tells them here in verse number 11. I just want to read verses 11, 12 here in Ephesians chapter 4. And it says here, And he, he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. You know, I, I, I want to say here that, that, that God has given many people many gifts. I, I've seen so many people use their, their talents and their gifts for the Lord. I mean, I, I tell you, some people can sing, can play instruments. I, I was not here Friday evening, but my wife said it was a great musical uh, you know, program that was here Friday evening, and uh, I, I know they're very talented. Some of those people are very gifted. Some some people are very gifted at, at teaching and speaking, and and working with uh, with with the youth. I know you know, Dickie. You said you enjoyed when we had our vacation Bible school. Uh, you know, I'm gonna tell you what the kids love you, man. You, you like a you like a big old giant to them. And they, they do, and, it, and so many people have a gift uh, for reaching out uh, and touching people. But, you know, our church has been given a gift of our pastor. He's, you know, if you believe that he's been sent here uh, by God, that he has been placed in this, as the shepherd of this church by, by God, then you know what? We need to look at that as a blessing and a gift of God. Uh, you know, he, ha- he, we have been given a gift. He, and, and it says here uh, that he's been, been put here for our benefit. Uh, in verse 12 it says, for the perfecting of the saints. You know, the saints are you and I, the, the members of the body of Christ. That's, that's for you. You know, I, you know we all, I always say this, God's still working on me. Amen. But, he, but in many cases, he uses our pastor to help in our perfecting. Uh, you know, I think like Paul said, you know, by the grace of God, I am what I am. Amen. By the grace of God, I feel like uh, it's only by His grace that I am what I am today. But I know that Glenn Turner had a hand in that in that process as well. I wouldn't be here tonight if it was not for God. But I thank the Lord that that Glenn had also had faith in me to 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 help me. And I'm I'm coming along. I ain't as perfect as Lawrence yet. Lawrence ain't as Lawrence ain't as perfect as Dickie, but we're all getting there, Amen. Amen. We're all getting there. But but our pastor is here for the perfecting of our faith, uh, of our of our Christian walk. That's that's part of his job and what he does, and I appreciate every every part of that that he does for us, Amen. He's here uh for the work of the ministry in verse twelve that says for the work of the ministry. You know, I, I, I thank the Lord that we have such a hard-working pastor. And his, his first and foremost uh, priority is the work of the ministry. Uh, he, he's not here. Uh, I have never seen, uh, um, you know, uh, any part of, of Glenn's ministry where it points to himself. And I appreciate him for the hard work he does in every facet of the ministry, of lifting people up, of helping people, of encouraging people. That's a ministry in itself. He's here for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, and for the edifying of the body of Christ. You know, this is, this is, this is Christ's church. Amen? Amen? This is Christ's church. Woods Chapel is, is, is Christ's church. We are the body of Christ. But you know what? There has to be somebody in the lead. There has to be somebody at the head. And for the edifying and lifting up of Jesus Christ, I, you know, I appreciate our pastor for, for doing that and everything that we do. Every ministry that we, that, that we have, that we, that we are participate in, points to Jesus Christ and winning the lost to Christ. You know, we're not, we're not a museum in here. We're a hospital. 
and he's the lead surgeon, amen, and, and we just, we all do our part. We all got to gotta pull together in the ministry and in the body of Christ. But I appreciate the gift that we have, you know, as Glenn and Sandy as the head of the church, the shepherds of the flock. And, and we have, you know, a good pastor here, and I appreciate him so much. If you turn uh, with me over to 2 Timothy chapter number 4 tonight, I just want to look at a couple of things that, that Paul told Timothy. As Paul put Timothy in charge, um, you know, our pastor is in charge here. And I appreciate so many things about our pastor that we have. I, I don't know, you know, I just feel like um, we, have, we have a special uh, church here. Uh, as long as we keep the main thing the main thing, it's going to stay that way. As long as we keep God first, it's going to stay that way. As long as we have a, a pastor who will preach the word, uh, that's going to stay that way. Amen. In First Timothy chapter number four, uh, and, and in verse number one, Paul told Timothy, he said, "I charge thee, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at His appearing in His kingdom, preach the word." He told Timothy, he said, if you're going to be a leader, he said, I'm, I'm telling you right now, I'm charging this to you, I'm putting it to you, I'm telling you straight, the, the, the main thing you better do, number one, is preach the Word. Preach the Word, preach all the Word, preach nothing but the Word. And I appreciate our pastor for standing on this, this Word of God. He doesn't, he doesn't try to uh, add anything to it. He doesn't try to take anything away from it. If the Word says it, that's the truth. If it says it's wrong, it's wrong. And I appreciate a pastor who does not try to, to twist the word, to put his opinions on it, and, and make it something that's his own personal preference. I appreciate our pastor for preaching the word. Amen? Amen. Uh, you know, I, I appreciate that. It says to preach the word, to be instant in season and out of season. You know, Glenn always has to be ready no matter what. I, I know he's gotten calls in the middle of the night, early in the morning, late in the evening, whatever he's, you know, he gets a call to do a funeral, he goes, and he's always prepared to do what it takes for the ministry work, or, 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 or take care of something, or to do something, whatever it needs. I know, you know, I, I'm just saying I appreciate him because he will do everything from, from sweeping this floor to doing whatever it takes at the highest level of this ministry. He's ready to do what it takes. Him and Sandy both sacrifice. And I appreciate that. They, they've helped me. They've been examples to me. But I appreciate uh, his, his being ready, instant, in season and out of season. Many times we use that but, you know, to, to, you know, to speak or to do something. But I know you calling, he'll do it. He'll be ready. He'll, 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 he'll make it, if at all possible, he'll get it done. Uh, he, uh, it, I appreciate him for that. Paul told Timothy, uh, you know, to, repu to reprove and rebuke. You know, that's not always fun to, to discipline. You know, if you're a parent, you know, it's, it, it's a necessary thing as a parent to discipline your children. Um... You know, we were talking today about how schools used to whip the kids, and they don't do that anymore. And you, and you, and really, I think you see the manifestation of of the lack of discipline in schools, uh, the lack of discipline, you know, in the communities. Parents don't discipline their kids uh, the way that they need it, the way that they're called to. But I'm gonna say this: I see churches today that do not have that that do not have the the discipline in the churches. In the church house, in the pews, the, 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 when the discipline in the church is lacked and goes away, then the ministry goes away. Then the effectiveness for the ministry goes away. And, and you know, I, I, I'm not saying, Glenn, uh, you know, if, you're, if, you've been to, if you've been here for any length of time, you know, he, he doesn't beat you up. He doesn't beat you down. But he says what needs to be said at the right time that needs to be said. And I appreciate him for that. I appreciate him not overlooking things. 
and say, look, when, when it's time to pull things in line, let's pull them in line. I appreciate that, Pastor. Don't ever stop doing what you think is right. And, 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 and we need to accept that and, and understand that it's for our benefit. It's for our perfecting of the saints. He, he is here as, as a gift of God to, repu- to reprove and rebuke. But in verse number 2, it also says what? To exhort with long suffering. With long suffering. You know, I'm sure, uh, you know, Dickie, I'm sure that, that I'm sure he's long suffered with me a few times. Amen. I, I have not been, <coughs> I have not been perfect in, in my position here. And, but you know what? He's encouraged me along the way. Every step of the way. And I'm sure he's probably at times going, boy, he's, he's making my job tougher sometimes. But I, and I apologize for, for the times when I make your job tougher. But, I, but, but you know, I'm so thankful that we have a, a, a leader, a pastor that exhorts. That's probably his biggest ministry. It, the, the biggest thing is an example to me that I've learned is how to lift people up, how to encourage people. How to lift up the discouraged. How to find someone who feels disenfranchised. How to find someone who feels like nobody cares and and they're forgotten and and single them out and lift them up and let them know God loves them. That Jesus died for them the same as he died for anyone else in this building. I, 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 I admire that and I appreciate that about him. That he exhorts with long suffering. And doctrine. He doesn't tell you anything that's not the truth. Does not tell you anything that's not the truth. I appreciate that about him. I appreciate our pastor. Why is that? Because if you look here in verse number 3, it says, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust." Shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fables. Watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, and make full proof of thy ministry. You know, I think that our pastor sees that time. You know, we've said that here. If we think we're above this, it would chapel, we're in trouble. We're in trouble. If we think we're above turning away from sound doctrine, we're in trouble. It could happen here the same as it's happened in any other church. I'm thankful that we have a a watchman that says it's not going to happen under his watch. It says here, watch thou in all things. You know, I'm sure Glenn's endured, Glenn and Sandy have endured many afflictions over the years of their ministry. We, last year we, saw, we celebrated with him his 30th year here at the church and ministry. I'm sure he has had, him and his wife have had to endure a lot of afflictions. But he felt responsible as a watchman for the church to, to do what he had to do. Uh, you know, to do the work of an evangelist. That, that's a responsibility of the man of God, the pastor of the church, to do that work of the evangelist and to entrust that to other people in the church. It's not only his responsibility, but it's our responsibility as well to evangelize, to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is our job to encourage him and lift him up that he can make full proof of his ministry through us. Through us, we we are not just servants here of, of of a pastor. We're not just employees of the pastor here. We are co-laborers together with our pastor. It's he is the watchman. He's the shepherd. But you know what? We are all part of the body of Christ here. We are all co-laborers together. Although he has a tremendous responsibility and a tremendous job, and I appreciate him for what he does at this church, for this church, continues to work in this church, the church needs to support him, needs to pray for him, needs to continue to work with him, encourage him. Because when, when he's encouraged, when, when you pray for him, when you work hard 
for this ministry and this church, and it helps take pressure off him, man, we're, that's when we're making full proof of our ministry together here at Wood Chapel Church. This, we have been blessed with a great leader. We, we have been blessed with a pastor and his wife that have done a tremendous job here that have, I believe have tried to follow the Lord in everything and every step of the way. We've grown under him and, and, and by the grace of God. But we cannot stay where we're at. You know, the, the bar continues to be raised. You know, I, I told the, uh, the football coaches at, at our last meeting when we finished our season, we won, we won more games this year than they've won in, in a decade. And we, we, we said, that's great, that's good. I said, but listen, we can't, we can't be satisfied with that. We have, the bar's been raised, so that's where we need to start next year. You know, but here at Wood Chapel Church, the bar has been raised every year. Every year. And now, I look around and I, I see a, 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 an opportunity for, for this church to continue to grow, to take steps, to move, to win more people to Christ than we ever have before. It's going to take prayer. It's going to take hard work. It's going to take full proof of our ministry here at Wood Chapel Church. So do I, I, I appreciate it. Our pastor, I appreciate Sandy, and I appreciate them being the leaders, but we need to be the congregation that stands behind them, that pushes them forward, and prays for them every single day. Amen. So with that, uh, we're going to have a time here to close in prayer, and then we're going to let everyone go down and enjoy some of the food and refreshments. And I just want to ask you, if you would, to just tell the pastor and Miss Sandy how much you appreciate them. How much you how much you, you love what they do here, and you love being here, you love having them here, because I know you do. Amen. I hear it, but they need to hear it. Amen. So tonight we're going to close in prayer. We're going to pray for our pastor. We're going to pray for his wife, and then we're going to head on down. We're going to pray for this food. So I'm going to ask Brother Dickey. Brother Dickey, could you close us in prayer tonight, in prayer for our pastor, prayer for this food, Prayer for the church tonight. Thank you. Lord, we do thank you for the blessings that you put on this church, Lord. We are blessed with having six good leaders in the same day. I just pray, Lord, you keep our health and the community one for all. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord.